friends, it's Fiction Friday time! Today, we're reading part three of chapter three of our ongoing book, Lad, a Dog, by Albert Payson Terhune. So far, Lad has befriended a little invalid girl who is staying at his home for a bit. And he even had to fend off Lady from snapping at her when Baby tugged at her fur a little too hard. But now all is well, and Lad and she are great friends. So let's see what happens next. As always, the link to the ebook is in the description below. Chapter 3, Part 3, A Miracle of Two Spring drowsed into early summer, and with the passing days, Baby continued to look less and less like an atrophied mummy and more like a thin but normal child of five. She ate and slept, as she had not done for many a month. The lower half of her body was still dead, but there was a faint glow of pink in the flat cheeks, and the eyes were alive once more. The hands that pulled at Lad in impulsive friendliness or in punishment were stronger, too. Their fur tugs hurt worse than at first. But the hurt always gave Lad that same twinge of pleasure, a twinge that helped to ease his heart's ache over the defection of Lady. On a hot morning in early June, when the mistress and the master had driven over to the village for the mail, the child's mother wheeled the invalid chair to a tree-roofed nook down by the lake, a spot whose deep shade and lush long grass promised more coolness than did the veranda. It was just the sort of spot a city dweller would have chosen for a nap, and just the spot through which no countryman would have cared to venture at that dry season without wearing high boots. Here, not three days earlier, the master had killed a copperhead snake. Here, every summer, during the late June mowing, the places scythe wielders moved with glum caution, and seldom did their progress go unmarked by the scythe severed body of at least one snake. The place, for the most part, lay on hillside and plateau, free from poisonous snakes of all kinds, and usually free from mosquitoes as well. The lawn, close-shaven, sloped down to the lake. To one side of it, in a narrow stretch of bottom land, a row of weeping willows pierced the loose stone lake wall. Here the ground was seldom bone dry. Here the grass grew rankest. Here also, driven to water by the drought, abode eft, lizard, and an occasional snake, finding coolness and moisture in the long grass, and a thousand hiding places amid the stone crannies or the lake wall. If either the mistress or the master had been at home on this morning, the guest would have been warned against taking baby there at all. She would have been doubly warned against the folly which she now proceeded to commit, of lifting the child from the wheelchair and placing her on a spread rug in the grass with her back to the low wall. The rug, on its mattress of lush grasses, was soft. The lake breeze stirred the lower boughs of the willows, the air was pleasantly cool here and had lost the dead hotness that brooded over the higher ground. The guest was well pleased with her choice of a resting place. Lad was not. The big dog had been growing uneasy from the time the wheelchair approached the lake wall. Twice he put himself in front of it, only to be ordered aside. Once the wheels hit his ribs with jarring impact. As Baby was laid upon her grassy bed, Lad barked loudly and pulled at one end of the rug with his teeth. The guest shook her parasol at him and ordered him back to the house. Lad obeyed no orders, save those of his two deities. Instead of slinking away, he sat down beside the child, so close to her that his ruff pressed against her shoulder. He did not lie down as usual, but sat. Tulip ears erect, dark eyes cloudy with trouble, head turning slowly from side to side, nostrils pulsing. To a human, there was nothing to see or hear or smell, other than the cool beauty of the nook, the softening of the breeze in the willows, the soft fragrance of a June morning. To a dog, there were faint rustling sounds that were not made by the breeze. There were equally faint and elusive scents that the human nose could not register. Notably, a subtle odor of a crushed cucumbers. If you have ever killed a pit viper, you know that smell. The dog was worried. He was uneasy. His uneasiness would not let him sit still. It made him fidget and shift his position and once or twice growl a little under his breath. 
Presently, his eyes brightened, and his brush began to thud gently on the rug edge. For a quarter mile above, the place's car was turning in from the highway. In it were the mistress and master, coming home with the mail. Now everything would be all right, and the onerous duties of guardianship would pass to more capable hands. As the car rounded the corner of the house and came to a stop at the front door, the guest caught sight of it. Jumping up from her seat on the rug, she started toward it in quest of mail. So hastily did she rise that she dislodged one of the wall's small stones and sent it rattling down into a wide crevice between the two larger rocks. She did not heed the tinkle of stone on stone, nor a sharp little hiss that followed, as the falling missile smote the coils of a sleeping copperhead snake in one of the wall's lowest cavities. But Lad heard it, and he heard the slithering of scales against rock sides as the snake angrily sought new sleeping quarters. The guest walked away, all ignorant of what she had done, and before she had taken three steps, a triangular grayish ruddy head was pushing out from the bottom of the wall. Twistingly, the copper head glided out onto the grass at the very edge of the rug. The snake was short and thick and dirty, with a distinct and intricate pattern interwoven on its rough upper body. The head was short, flat, wedge-shaped. Between eye and nostril on either side was the sinister pinhole that is the infallible mark of the poison sack serpent. Oh no! A snake is about to make trouble for Lad and Baby, and maybe even bite her if Lad can't stop the snake in time. I've never met a snake before. I don't think I want to do that. I'll leave all the snake catching to Lad. That's all the time we have for today, though, so we'll have to see what happens next Friday when we return to our story. And be sure to come back on Monday for our next Music Monday song, and Wednesday for the next entry in our Working Dogs Wiki series. Thanks for hanging out with me today!